All right, in this case, we're going to imagine an object of mass m at some height up in the air. Should you be afraid of that object? Absolutely, it might have, it has potential energy stored in it. If it's dropped, work is going to be done on it. It's going to descend because it's in a gravity field. Acceleration is due to gravity. And as it descends, it will gain velocity. It's going to gain speed. So from kinematics, some time ago in our study, we know that the final speed that it gains is related to its displacement and it's related to gravity. Actually, it's height change in gravity. So the final speed it has depends on how hard gravity is tugging on it and how far it falls. And we can solve this equation for uh, gh. It's going to be v squared over 2. We're going to use this result later. So we'll throw that on the back burner for a bit. Uh, again, when this object's descending, work is done on it, and it can cause change to whatever it hits. It's going to do work on the, on the person's hand. It's going to hurt. Uh, in this example, you drop an object. When it's falling, its energy was, uh, it was constant, but it's changing forms. You lose potential energy, but you end up gaining what's called kinetic energy just before striking the ground it has kinetic energy and has velocity but no height in between it has some of both so as you're losing PA you would be gaining KA work is being done by the gravity field and it's causing an increase in kinetic energy how can we account for the change in kinetic energy mathematically uh, let's look at this from an energy perspective. When no external force acts on a system, the energy is constant. So really the work done is zero in this case. And what's happening? You're losing one form and gaining another. Starting off with conservation of energy, the starting energy plus the work done is the final energy. So the starting energy is MGH. The final energy is some unknown energy that we're going to define. If we solve this for GH, we'll end up with E over M. And oh, that, there it is, our friend who was on the back burner. We can use this. GH is also V squared over 2. So where, v, where GH was, now we can sub in. Let's just pick a different color. V squared, or v squared over 2. So V squared over 2 is equal to that final energy, we don't know what it is, over M. And if we solve for that final energy, that new energy we're defining as being kinetic energy, Ke, is 1 half mv squared. This is the energy an object has by virtue of its motion, its kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is one half mv squared. So here's, it's more visible in this slide, but the Ke is one half mv squared. If we're interested in finding the kinetic energy of an object, you need only to know its mass and velocity. So here's how I say it, moving, uh, moving velocity objects m, moving objects have kinetic energy. And just like PE or work, they're measured in joules.